So if you lived in a really cold climate and you had the risk of being stuck in the car in freezing conditions, would you rather be in an electric vehicle or a fossil fuel powered vehicle? Hello, welcome to Kitty Nero Diaries. Now this is an interesting question because it's one that the anti-EV mob jump on. First in the queue, as always, is M Guy with some of his uh, more exaggerated outlandish uh, fears, uncertainties and doubts that he loves to spread around. But I've been doing some thinking about this and I don't really have much experience of living in cold climates. I mean, I've lived in the UK, I've been stuck in traffic jams and accidents and yeah, worst case scenarios, it's been three, four hours before the road's been cleared and we've been on our way and it's not the kind of really cold temperatures that you get in some parts of the United States, Canada, Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, those kind of countries. So I don't have the experience, but I do have the experience of living in a very hot climate um, in Dubai. And the advice was, first thing, make sure your tank is topped up so you've got plenty of fuel. Secondly, um, take lots of water really important with water and I know that I live if I lived in a cold climate if I lived in Canada in the winter I'd make sure I had plenty of water blankets thick coat and I would keep my car topped up or if it's an electric car charge at home make sure it's constantly at at least 80 percent so anyway the I'm going to refer to an article here that um, was published in car and driver magazine in 2022 Okay, so the story goes that it's a Tuesday afternoon on January the 4th um, and it's just after an epic blizzard created a 48 mile jam of vehicles stopped along Interstate 95 in Virginia. So the article, which was published in the Washington Post, stemmed from an anecdote tweeted by an unnamed Canadian truck driver who gave blankets to a Tesla driver worried about keeping his kids warm overnight. Well, go out, you live in a, those kind of conditions. Why didn't you have any blankets? I don't know. But this is, so it's an anecdotal story. So um, the Washington Post columnist Charles Lane um, wrote an article with the alarmist headline, Imagine Virginia's icy traffic catastrophe, but with only electric vehicles. So, and it turned out it was a collection of isolated facts and specific assertions designed to try to make the point that EVs aren't safe in such conditions. So sadly, the author didn't support that. Well, of course he wouldn't. He didn't support the point with any of the data or analyses showing how EVs actually operate in cold weather. So in the article, they go on to sort of try to say, well, let's say both the, the, the petrol car and the EV were two thirds full of fuel or two thirds charge. How much fuel do they, char uh, do they use? Well, uh, a two and a half litre four cylinder car on tick over, on idle, uses about a third of a gallon. That's a US gallon, by the way, an hour just to run the climate control. Um, and the estimate is that um, an electric vehicle uh, would use two kilowatt hours um, uh, every hour uh, to keep the cabin at 65 degrees. Now, two years later, car and driver went round this again. Um, can an EV keep you warm the same way a gasoline car can? And the answer is almost certainly yes. So by that time, they tested two cars against each other, a popular mid-sized EV sedan and a gasoline equivalent with an outside temperature of 15 Fahrenheit, which is minus 10 centigrade. We found that the EV with a full charge would keep occupants at 65 degrees for almost two days, 45 hours, while the gasoline car with a tank full ran its heater for 52 hours. So. To all intents and purposes, there's no real difference because, you know, nobody gets stuck. I mean, it would be incredibly unlikely to be stuck. I mean, the, you, you know, the first article from 2022, they were stuck for 14 hours, which, you know, very, very unusual. Now, um, 
and they go on to say the number of people trapped for it two entire days is negligibly low and the EV would have provided more hours of warmth if it had a heat pump. And of course, the other thing you can do is, I mean, my car doesn't have it, but most EVs now you buy, they have heated seats uh, because for most conditions, you can just heat the seats, uh, you feel warm and you lose less energy in the process. So um, we've got some kind of, you know, d evidence, we've got some kind of data to go on. So at this point, I will bring in a, a small bit of experience I had, and this was eight years ago. Um, I'd been to Spain to a trade show in Barcelona and it snowed. This was in February and people couldn't believe that it was snowing in Barcelona. The local people, they, they, they never get snow. Anyway, at the end of the trade show, I, I took a flight from Barcelona to Bordeaux across the Pyrenees <clears throat> where I'd left my car, which at the time was um, a Mark II Prius, 2007 Prius. And as I drove north from Barcelona, it was getting colder and colder and I got north of Angoulême. So I'm kind of almost home and the snow absolutely chucked it down. Now, we really don't get a lot of snow in the Nouvelle Aquitaine and it's very rare and the authorities don't know how to deal with it. You know, there's no salting of the roads. Um, there's no snow plows or anything like that. So I'm on the N10, which is a dual carriageway and it's over undulating terrain, it goes up and it goes down. And what happened was um, a lorry had skidded uh, on the next uprise. I could see it in the distance. It was just, it was, um, it was dark, but there were a lot of uh, car headlights around. I could just make out the, this, this truck. And the queue uh, came all the way back down. The, the, the you know, police were there and uh, rescue services were there trying to move this truck so that we could get past it and the snow was continuing to fall. Now, I set my heater on like you do because obviously don't want to uh, get cold. Uh, I had a coat and everything so that was not too bad and I just sat there. But of course, it's, it was a, um, it's a hybrid car and the engine just cuts out and then it comes back on again and it cuts out and it was coming on to keep me, you know, a comfortable 18 centigrade every 15 minutes. And it wasn't that cold. I mean, not compared to the kind of cold that, you know, some countries get. But it was quite interesting that the cars around me, they were starting their engines and then running them and then t turning them off. And of course, a lot of modern petrol and diesel cars, they have cut out like that. So when the engine gets warm and the car's not moving, they cut out. But if you've set your uh, temperature to a certain level, uh, the, uh, when the temperature falls low, it will trigger the engine to kick off again. And then I'm thinking, well, okay, I'm in an EV or I'm, I'm in a petrol or diesel car. I'm equally well protected as long as I've got plenty of fuel in the tank and I've got a reasonable amount of charge. But what about the risk of something going wrong? Now, in an EV, it's quite simple. If it's on and there's current flowing from the battery that's ready to be used by the motor, but you're not using the motor because you're not moving, but the heater's using it. So there's very, very little to, to go wrong in that process. But in a petrol or diesel car, you've got a fuel tank, you've got a fuel line. And by the way, in extreme cold temperatures, the fuel line can freeze. And then you've got the starter motor. Will that turn over? And the battery, if the battery is too flat or it gets too cold, will it turn the starter motor over? Okay, and then you've got all the processes in that engine, all the moving parts. And then of course the big one, and it takes me back to that, um, that uh, story that was in the Washington Post from 2022. 
They said it was a blizzard. Now, if your exhaust pipe gets clogged up in a blizzard, then you don't have an engine running. So you're going to get cold very, very quickly. And, you know, obviously in an EV, the snow can pile up around the car, but there's no exhaust pipe. You're not going to get your, you know, so there's nothing there to stop the battery providing power to the heater. And that's at that point, that's all you want. If you're in survival mode, you don't care about having a motor to make you go anywhere. And in, in the case of a fossil fuel car, the engine is just running to keep you warm. You're, you're not interested in being able to engage any gears and go anywhere. So I think there's far more risk in being stuck in a snowstorm or in seriously cold weather in a fossil fuel car than there is in an EV. So there you go. Your comments, as always, most welcome. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.